Welcome back to Block TV. It's time now for Chain Breakers. The global investment fund Franklin Templeton, which has over $700 billion in assets under management, has laid out plans to use Curve Wallet's patented blockchain-based system to secure tokenized shares in the financial provider's money market fund. And I speak now with Itai Malinger, Curve's CEO and co-founder, about the latest procedures and what's happening. Firstly, Itai, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, great to be here. All right, so to kick things off now, Curve recently announced that uh, Franklin Templeton uh, selected Curve's institutional wallet service to protect its newest money market fund. Give me uh, some idea and for our audience, uh, some notions of the significance of this partnership and what you expect to come from it. Yeah, well, uh, Franklin Templeton is a Fortune 500, one of the first to adopt a publicly um, a blockchain-based uh, digital asset. Um, they have uh, announced about a few months ago uh, in a press release uh, that they are intending to have a money market fund uh, on the Stellar blockchain. And as such, they were looking for an infrastructure, a tech stack to secure and enable them to uh, integrate into uh, the Stellar blockchain and enable them to use um, the money market fund on top of the Stellar network. Okay, and why uh, was Curb specifically selected by Franklin Templeton uh, for this uh, particular role? Yeah, so when you need to integrate uh, at that scale, you're looking at both uh, security and scalability. I think uh, they were uh, looking at both uh, traditional uh, HSM-based uh, solution as well as uh, um, more unique uh, novel approaches. Our approach is based on multi-party computation uh, that effectively eliminates the private key that usually is needed to be protected out of the equation um, and creates a more software-defined way of integrating uh, with whatever blockchain possible. All right, and so to help me understand a, a little bit here, so uh, Curve sort of markets itself as a, as a bit of a disruptor in the digital asset security, particularly for those institutional investors. How is it that you're going about doing that? And who exactly, obviously other than uh, Franklin Templeton, but looking wider afield, who exactly are the target audience for Curve's wallet? Yeah, so the problem that Curve uh, is solving and excited to solve is the issue of securing digital assets. I think that many organizations are looking to integrate into a blockchain, uh, usually public blockchains, uh, in a way that is secure and security is the main uh, barrier to entry for those organizations. So uh, looking at exchanges, the custodians, the asset managers such as Franklin Templeton, uh, brokers, uh, OTC desks, um, many different organizations are trying to adopt digital assets and each of them has their own value add that they want to bring to the table. If you're an exchange, you want to bring liquidity, you want to have a great user experience for your consumer customers. Uh, if you're a custodian, there's a value add uh, around uh, the bookkeeping, etc. Um, all of the above need a tech stack to both secure the asset, but also to on-ramp or integrate into the underlying blockchain. Um, and this is exactly what Curve does best and what Curve provides. Uh, we call that a wallet service. Um, a wallet is the infrastructure that is needed to both secure and integrate with a blockchain. Um, and Curve does that in a way that is software only, software defined, and with the best uh, security today in the market. Okay, now beyond uh, sort of the wallet uh, specific elements itself, back in May, uh, Curve announced a partnership with Munich RE offering up insurance to Curve wallet holders. Uh, now this is a, a, a very central uh, key issue within the uh, crypto space as a whole or in the blockchain space as a whole. Could you explain uh, the importance of uh, such insurance coverage in the space and how you're managing uh, to work with insurance in a space that does sorely lack some of those uh, insurance needs, especially for institutional clients? Yeah, so insurance-wise, many organizations are trying to get insurance. This is a very long process, usually involving, uh, in most cases, insurance of the cold storage, cold wallets uh, that those organizations have. Uh, the process can take up to a year uh, and eventually is also very uh, expensive. Um, what Curve enables is to have, uh, and, and through the partnership uh, with Munich Re, the world's largest uh, reinsurer, 
Uh, what Curve enables is to get an insured wallet service. So you can choose whether you want the uh, uh, service um, without the insurance or with the insurance. But what it means is that you don't need to go ahead and get uh, the insurance on your own. You don't need to go through the audit process. Uh, you don't need to uh, get underwriters come to your facilities and look at the way that you secure your uh, uh, physical storage of your digital assets. Since all the assets are out there uh, in the cloud, on the Curve Cloud, and secured with the best of breed uh, security, uh, Unicree has done an audit to our service. Um, and eventually decided that this is this makes sense from an insurer's perspective, and it also uh, uh, enables the customer without all the process to get uh, even better rates than they would get uh, from direct insurance um, for their cold storage. Mm. Okay, now, now insurance is, is a critical space, but of course, uh, working hand in hand with that is security. Now, last week, South Korean, uh, Upbit, uh, uh, South Korean exchange Upbit announced a hack uh, to its exchange to the tune of about $50 million in ETH that was stolen from them. Uh, talk me through, how would Curve's wallet have helped to prevent this hack from taking place? Yeah, so this is uh, very unfortunate. What's more unfortunate is that this has been happening for the past uh, three, five uh, years since the industry has taken off. This is the reason that Curve went into um, the space uh, back in 2017. We were seeing exchanges being hacked on a weekly basis. Uh, and the reason that this is happening is that exchanges, uh, the best practice today is to have hot and cold uh, storage hot or very susceptible to cyber attacks and cold are presumably uh, secure from cyber attacks. They have other issues that we can uh, go over. Um, and specifically, when you talk about hot, whatever you put in that hot wallet, uh, once an attacker, or an adversary can get into your systems, they are able to, in a very uh, immediate way, uh, drain that wallet. Um, Curve has... Uh, introduced multi-party computations into uh, a cloud service that enables to secure um, any asset. And specifically, uh, MPC is the only way to secure Ethereum. Um, so if they were using uh, Curve, uh, they could have set up uh, a very simple policy saying, uh, I want this hot wallet to make transactions of not more than, um, let's say, $5,000. Uh, to my known customers, but transactions that more than that will require a very separate set of approvers, uh, either human or machine based. Uh, uh, and, and, and for sure that this would have um, enabled a bit to contain uh, the attack and to restrain the ability of the adversary to steal the funds. Uh, we've seen that uh, in the Binance hack uh, uh, back in, uh, uh, in May, uh, same thing. Hot wallets, once the adversary gets in, they're able to move all the assets uh, outside. All right. Now, as well, I mean, of those cyber related uh, concerns, uh, the classic security concerns, I want to uh, touch on a different note and throw a bit of another scenario at you. So obviously, we all heard of uh, the Canadian exchange Quadriga CX story in which the CEO died unexpectedly and 115,000 customers still uh, are owed about $190 million that was locked up in the cold wallet that's now unaccessible. Talk me through how Curve would help and is helping institutions manage these risks that maybe aren't inherently cyber related, but relate more to the human nature uh, that's still impacted in, in the blockchain and cryptocurrency space. Yeah, so going back to cold versus hot, right? So cold uh, storage, uh, hot wallets are, uh, of course, uh, connected to the internet, uh, susceptible to cyber attacks. Uh, cold wallets are presumably more secure, uh, but you have to remember that they also hold a much more significant number, uh, much more significant uh, uh, sums. Um, so in the overall, the risk profile is not very different between hot and cold, because in cold, you have much more assets, uh, that still have their own challenges. They have the insider threats. Uh, this happened many times. Uh, they have the physical damage. Uh, and of course, they have the operational risk. Uh, there is a very uh, uh, expensive operation involved with moving assets between cold uh, and hot. And those uh, processes uh, are susceptible uh, with a lower probability uh, uh, to malfunctions, uh, such as what happened uh, with Quadriga. 
specifically there, there was no adversary. No one stole the assets. The, if you look at the blockchain, uh, the assets are still there. Um, and really, uh, that hot versus cold uh, process is something that is very expensive and has its own uh, risks. Curve, uh, instead of protecting the private key and then either protecting it uh, online or offline, uh, eliminates the private key altogether and creates a distributed mechanism uh, uh, to make transactions. And that is, in that process, you can say, um, what kind of policy, internal policy, do I want to enforce based on the risk coming in from the transaction? So, for example, I want uh, small transactions to be approved automatically by the hot machine, but I want larger transactions, let's say $10 million of transactions, to be approved by a growing number of approvers. Uh, and this way, you, A, you're not dependent on one individual, uh, but also you, you know that each and every transaction uh, is happening according to your policy and your predefined way of moving those assets. That's certainly an, an important uh, way in which to move forward in a space that has hit those sort of physical limitations, whether we talk about in security or in human uh, interaction with the network itself. But uh, Itai, you passed my test. You've survived my, uh, my uh, theoreticals being tossed at you. Now tell me, what does the future hold for Curve? What are you looking out for moving into 2020? Yeah, so as I mentioned, we have a growing number of customers. And what's uh, uh, exciting to see about this is that it is cross-vertical. We are seeing the verticals being created uh, as we speak. We're seeing exchanges. We're seeing custodians. We're seeing OTC desks and lenders. Uh, many different players are entering the space, both traditional, such as uh, Franklin Templeton, uh, as well as uh, our crypto native companies and fintech companies. Uh, we are getting a huge uh, uh, set of demands uh, for additional uh, capabilities, for additional blockchains to be supported uh, using the platform. We see blockchains uh, being introduced uh, uh, um, less than 2017, but uh, the blockchains that are being introduced are solving different challenges. And I believe that uh, eventually we are here to enable our customers uh, to do what they want to do best uh, and solve the security issue. So we're growing both on the product side, of course, but also uh, geographically. Um, our focus today is mainly uh, U.S. and uh, Europe. Uh, and we're going to grow also uh, to uh, the Asian market um, as well as other markets. Um, and the product, as I mentioned, will uh, grow with more capabilities, more, more policy uh, 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 capability, more integrations, and eventually um, more blockchain as well. Well, it definitely sounds like there's an exciting future there for Curve coming up. Uh, we'll be sure to keep following here at Block TV to find out what happens into the future and how it develops. But in the meantime, Itai Malinga, I want to thank you so much for joining us today on Block TV to talk about this interesting topic. And in the meantime, stay with us at blocktv.com for all the latest in news and information. I'm Asher Westrop Evans. Thanks for watching. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.